So for people who haven't paid attention to the genome world, mm -hmm. in the year 2000, I think it was, mm -hmm. the federal government said that two researchers, uh, Francis Collins working at NIH mm -hmm. and Craig Venter, who was, had a private company, had Correct. basically discovered the human genome. Correct. So that happened in, I think, 2000. President Clinton said that was a tie, and they both uh, were given <laughs> credit for it, uh, leaving yeah. aside the intramural fighting that had gone on uh -huh. before. So it was then thought, okay, the world's going to be so much better now that we know the human genome, it's been mapped, yep. there'll be no more diseases, we can fix all these diseases. But what happened for the 10 years or so, or 15 years afterwards, yeah. it didn't seem like much happened. Well, this is, that's such an interesting question. Um, and this is also something that plagues me. Like Francis Collins and Pre President Clinton at the time came out and said, this human genome, like sequencing the human genome is gonna transform how we diagnose, treat, and prevent all human de disease. So it's a huge statement about what's gonna happen. And I would argue one of the biggest issues that's happened today is there has not been adoption of genetic technology. And I would say, point back to again, part of my dissatisfaction for, with the investing world is part of the reason why it has not been adopted is that a lot of genetic information is about prevention. So for instance, if I tell you, you are likely to have an adverse event from this, this antidepressant or you're potentially higher risk for atrial fib, those are not well monetized medical events. You can make a lot of money treating atrial fibrillation, but you cannot make money in the absence of a disease. So for instance, if I successfully keep you healthy to 100, you are not a profit center for the healthcare world. And so genetic information, a lot of that potential is not really adopted in the primary care setting in part because there's not necessarily a monetization path. So you're starting to see that more in cancer. You start to see it more in um, pregnancy related, but it has not been widely adopted. I would say the second thing is that the US is far, far behind com countries like the UK. So the UK has an incredibly impressive program called the UK Biobank, where they have half a million people who have consented, who are participating in a nationwide program. And it's amazing, like everyone, including 23andMe, uses the data that comes out from the UK Biobank. The US has totally fallen behind. So we have a program called All of Us, where we're trying to get people, it's supposed to be a million people, but the UK has already leapfrog us and said, we have a five million person program now that's going to be you know, running ahead. So the US, in part, there's also been a lot of politics around you know, how is this gonna execute? You know, what are the ethics on it? If we wanna really capture the benefit of the human genome, you need a massive, I would say multiple countries that come together and have like 100 million people who come together so you can really understand what the code is. The US is obsessed not so much with UK, but it's with China. So mm -hmm. is China ahead of us in this area or not? Well, China's crushing us too, but we don't know as much about what they're actually doing. So I would say like the one big worry that I always have is like China, China knows how to execute and they know how to lead on a program. And China has made no, um, no uncertain statements about their interest in genetics and that they wanna be the world leader in this next, the genetic revolution. So China has made huge efforts, they have huge programs, and they also have something called the Beijing Genome Institute, which is an incredibly well-funded, you know, um, you know well-funded with the government, and a massive sequencing shop where tons and tons of discoveries are being made and there's nothing in the US or nothing in the UK that's even comparable.